Hey everyone. It's already in a couple of videos this, this week or in this series, we've covered quite a lot to do with Microsoft Azure. So we kicked off with how do we protect the native IaaS workloads within Azure using a new product from Veeam called Veeam Backup for Microsoft Azure. So agentlessly being able to protect those workloads. Then we moved into two videos that touched on our direct restore to Microsoft Azure, which is how can we take image based backups that we've created potentially on premises with virtualization. So whether it be VMware, Hyper-V, even Nutanix AHV, or even physical machines and restore them as Azure VMs within Microsoft Azure. We also touched on some of the performance benefits and, and some of the considerations and restore scenarios that you could have there. So whether it's for test and dev, whether it's restore scenarios for disaster recovery or just data migration, touched on all of them. And I think to round this series out would be quite fitting to actually have a look at um, our capacity tier or how do we leverage Microsoft Azure blob storage to store longer term retention or just to have an off-site copy in a different location in a much cheaper and more more efficient way storing that into into object storage so i'm going to touch on what that looks like so i'm going to create it and then i'm going to touch on what the differences are between what we have from a, a copy mode and a move mode so and, and let's get into that so if i jump over to my azure portal you can see that i've actually got a few test storage accounts if you will so if i jump into here under storage accounts this is what you're going to need to do first is you're going to potentially need to go and create this well this storage account so i'm going to run through what this looks like so again you choose your subscription so i've got a couple but i'm going to use the visual studio then we choose where we want that to be in terms of resources we can give it a name as well. So let's say um, test visa is probably not taken. Um, and then US East, just because that's right near my my lab. Choose the account kind, the replication, etc. what you want to achieve with that. For test purposes, I generally just, just keep it as, as the standard. I don't need premium performance. I don't need particular different storage types there's there's two types i think or three types um and then i don't need any particular geo redundant pieces um network connectivity how do we want to get that it's going to be consumed outside of azure most likely it will be in my test instance whether we want things like security or and their own data protection and whether we want to leverage that as a data lake any particular tags that you want to add on to that and really, that's all you need to do to create that storage group. Oh, sorry, that storage account. So test Vizilla, you need to remember that one. And then once this is in there, so it doesn't take very long at all, is then we need to go and create a container that is where we're going to, well, we're going to start to see the breakdown of, of how, so we create a, we create a storage account, we create a container, and then we create a folder within that container that is where we're going to be writing our, our backups to. So as soon as this is finished, then we'll jump back into Veeam Backup Replication. And then we can quickly add this container. So again, let's just call this the Zilla. And we're going to say that I want access to that from that point of view and we're going to call it vzilla so we need to remember two things we need to remember test vzilla and we need to remember vzilla another thing what we also need is how do we get into that so we need something called an access key now i'm going to show this because this will be long gone by the time i share this video and hopefully that's secure enough so if I jump over now into, into my Veeam Backup Replication server, if you click up in the top left-hand corner, we've got this Manage Cloud Credentials. And if I go into here, you'll see many different types of, of uh, accounts that I've got added. If you hit the Add button, you've got, you've got four different options. You've got Veeam Cloud Connect, so our service providers that offer out particular services. 
we've got an AWS access key and then we've got one storage account, which is what we're going to be using today. And then also that Azure compute account, which is what you'd use for the direct restore to Azure. So in the storage account, we're going to say test vzilla as the account. And we're going to paste that long shared key in there that will be long gone by the time we get get this video published, hopefully. So that's that added. Then if we jump down to our backup infrastructure and we go to our backup repositories on the left hand side, if we right click here or even up here in the top left hand corner, we can get our options of what backup repository we actually want to add. So object repository, then we choose which one we want. So I want Microsoft Azure Blob Storage and I want Azure Blob Storage and not Azure Data Blocks. Let's just call this test vzilla just for my sanity. We're then going to choose which account we want that to be authenticated against and which region that is in. So you can see a few different sorts there. By default, it's the global. Hopefully, with everything that we've done, this will work and it will allow me then to choose the container. Now, there's only one container. If we choose multiple containers, that's absolutely fine. We just choose from the drop down. In fact, I'll show you in a bit how that looks. But yeah, it ultimately that's a it's the first um, bit of hierarchy that we see within within here. So now we don't have a folder created. So let's say I want to keep my backups here, or let's say we want to call it cloud tier, or let's call it Vzilla tier. So this is where I want to store those those backups that I want to tier into, and let's get onto that in a in a second as well. We can also limit the object storage consumption. So if you know that you want to put a soft limit in place, a quota per se, we can do that here as well. And what this is going to do is just going to create that. Now, this can be used on its own using our NAS backup. We can run through a, a backup job and I'll quickly show that because I don't want to, uh, I don't want to hijack the whole session talking about NAS. But if we look down here, we've got our backup repository which is going to go to a short term retention, which is going to be local. Then we've got our archive repository, which can be that one that I just added, the test, test Vizela. And that will drip down older file versions into that. Anyway, back to the um, Azure Blob storage. So now we've got that. Now what I want to do is I just for the purposes of creating another uh, a local backup repository because our scale out backup repository works in two well with two flavors of repository so just for just for simplicity I'm just going to call it this and I'll remove it afterwards but it works in a performance tier and it works into the capacity tier so for the capacity tier is going to be our object storage and for this particular demo, we're going to use a local backup repository called Vzilla. It's already got everything installed because this is already acting as that. So this shouldn't take too long. And I encourage everyone, anyone running or installing or configuring Veeam these days should be really looking at using the scale out backup repository to begin with. Even if you have only got one uh, repository to use, by doing this, it opens up the doors for that, that scalability later. And there's actually an ask for, for another video demo of, well, how can I get from a simple repository, which would be what we've just created there, I could absolutely back up to this backup repository one and start writing my image-based backups there. But once you've done that, you can't then add that to a scale out backup repository. So and maybe that's another video for another time. So I want to add a new scale out backup repository. I'm going to add my extent. So you see that new one that we've just created. We've got our locality or performance where I want my data to, to reside and where I want that to reside. The performance is really or appropriate. If you've got scale out backup repositories, or if you've got a scale out backup repository with multiple extents of different disk type, and you want to choose where particular backup files reside. So if you've got full backups, they will thrive on 
um, Dejuke devices or NAS devices, whereas our incrementals should be on the fastest possible disk so that you can get the backup job done as fast as possible. Next up, we choose whether we want to use that capacity tier. And this is the point where I said you should be using scale out backup repositories regardless because you don't have to have a capacity tier enabled. But in this instance, I want to enable that and I want to choose my new test, test Vizela. And now you've got two options. So in version 9.5, which was released at the beginning of 2019, you only had this option. And think of this as a, as a drip. So your backup jobs will have a retention and they might be 30 days. But you might also add this sort of number to your performance tier, which will keep 14 days locally, but we need to keep 30 days of the whole entire data set. So we're gonna, we're gonna um, tear down those 14 plus days down into object storage for cheaper, longer term retention. In version 10 that came out at the beginning of um, 2020, we've now got the ability to do copy backups to object storage. So think about as they land in our performance tier, they're also going to be sent to our capacity tier. Ideal for those scenarios around failure, um, disaster recovery, migrations, etc. being able to get that and having a copy of that data in a secondary location. So we can, and you can have them simultaneously working as well. So you don't need to have, you don't have to pick one at this point. We can also define when that happens. We can override that to a, to a percentage of when that, when that happens. So um, in terms of older backups, if our, if our performance tier runs out of storage, we could, in, we could override it here in that, um, we could override it here in terms of the percentage of disk space used so that we never ever break our performance tier because of because of space. So then we apply that and simply put, that's it. We've created the ability to copy and move our longer term retention backups, image based backups into object storage. And just to finish that off, I'll run through a a backup job of how we can how we can look at that so if i well this is actually a, a a job that goes to a um it goes into the scale up backup repository but now what we'd do is we'd just choose that new one that we've literally just created and that would give us the ability to to start leveraging that Hopefully that was useful. If there's any questions, then reach out to me on Twitter, at MichaelCade1. If there's anything that maybe I haven't covered that you think would be useful to see, then again, reach out on, on Twitter or in the comments below. I will also put a description, or in the description, I will put in some of the links to the other videos that all relate to this Microsoft Azure. And... I think coming up next, I think there's loads more Azure stuff or loads more Microsoft focus that we can touch on around Office 365 and, and various different things there. So I think that's where we're going to go next. And then literally there's so many things that we can talk about from a Veeam point of view. So let me um, leave, it, leave it with you there. And yeah, any questions, let me know. Thanks.